Well, hello there, folks, and welcome to another episode of the BRO Reloading Bench. I am your host, Wade Rush. Uh, the uh, deer season came in a little over two weeks ago here in Game Zone 4 here in South Carolina. But now, as of the 15th, we can use our doe tags. I have heard from, I, I lost count of all the subscribers wanting me to be able to, to take a deer with one or all these different reloaded slugs that we've been testing here over the years. And I'm gonna try to get that done for you guys this season. And so we're gonna start with the 20 gauge and I'm gonna show you guys just how simple this can be if you can find the dang components. Y'all stay tuned. Smacking that out. That's a that is a mechanism load right there. Like I said, boys, we're talking about some heavy hitting 20 gauge slugs today. Namely, mainly the uh, we're talking about the ballistic products thug slug. I don't know when they're going to have these in stock. These are the 20 gauge 7 8 ounce thug slugs. They, uh, like I said, I don't know. I, I don't know when, when, if they're going to have them back in stock. I've had these for a long time and finally getting around to testing some of them. And the Lyman Sabo slug, your big 20 gauge pellet, they also make a 12 gauge in the Lyman Sabo. All we're going to need today. Brand new Fiocchi, three inch from Ballistic Products. I think they do have these in stock. Okay, folks, today we're going to be using 800X powder, Alliant Unique, um, Alliant Blue Dot, and IMR Blue. Okay, boys, first thing we need is 24 grains of 800X and our brand new primed Fiocchi 616 primer, not a Magnum, 20 gauge, don't have the Magnum primers on them. And this is just how difficult this is. One thug slug, 20 gauge thug slug unit. Drop it straight down in here on top of your powder. I've got the 600 Junior set up for 20 gauge, 3 inch 20 gauge. Just like that. Now, out of the modified choke in my Stoger M3020, these things flew straight as an arrow, but were not accurate worth a dang. I guarantee you, rifle choke tube will tighten them right up. I haven't tested them with the rifle choke tube yet, but uh, but we'll get to that. Let me show you how this worked and the velocities that we got. Okay, ballistic products. Thug slug, 20 gauge thug slug. This is the three inch Fiocchi primed. Brand new hull, 24 grains of 800X and the 20 gauge ballistic products thug slug. I'm gonna shoot a three shot group at 50 meters. I'm gonna try to hold just on the bottom of the bull just to see where this thing is hitting. Boy, you can hear them things hit hard, I can't you? you? I mean, they're wide cutter on the front of those thug slugs. Man, them things are hit hard. Going 1,500 foot per second. Yeah, that's, that'll get it done. But they're flying straight as an arrow. Might, uh... Anyway, I don't know what order we hit them. We got one right here next to the bull, one here, and one here. 
they're flying straight, no doubt about it. But with that, that uh, I was holding about halfway right here with that uh, with that big fat bead sight on that uh, on that 20 gauge. It would probably be better if I had an optic of some kind on it. Well, let's try those Lyman and Sabo and see how they fly out of it. Alrighty. On the next set of shots, we went straight into the Lyman Sabo. And, okay, folks, in the first two sets of shots, we're going to be using 23 grains of Alliant Unique. Once again, we're using a brand new Fiocchi primed 3 inch hull, the AA20 white. Double A twenty wad and the Lyman Sabo twenty gauge slug. Mine are powder coated. Don't have to be. They are because I can. You know, you guys know me. They fit very, very nicely in the double A twenty wad. And what we did here, this was just to satisfy my own curiosity. We roll crimped and star crimped this round just to, uh, out of my own curiosity, to just see the differences in velocities. Ballistic products, I think this is a just a single cam rolling uh, crimp tool right here. Single roller. Um, let me see. On the 20 gauge, I keep a piece of a FC-12 wide laying around. That I can just set up here in the uh, in my vise, so it'll take up the space to grab my little 20 gauge here. We'll try to keep my big arm out of the way. Beautiful, and I'll put put another one together. And right over here, and we're gonna start start there. Beautiful round, and we shot these back to back because I wanted. I was curious about how the the difference between the roll crimp and the star crimp. And uh, after I shot the roll crimp set and didn't get really good accuracy out of it, then uh, went ahead and made a decision to uh, give this a try. I've got a little Carlson rifled choke tube here. You guys have any idea how much difference that can make? How much difference do you think that little piece of equipment right there could make in your accuracy? Watch this. The roll crimp, the first three shots using the Lyman Sabo with the AA20, exact same data, only we star crimp the second three shot group. Only hit the target with two. They were definitely flying straight. Looks like either maybe there or there or there. Not really sure. But wow, that's all over the dang place. It's the first time I've ever shot these loads, boys. First time I've ever tried it. We've done a lot more testing with the 12 gauge slugs than we have. I hadn't done hardly any with the 20 gauge. So y'all riding along right here with me, y'all seeing it as, I, as we see it. I don't know, I got uh, two more sets to try. 
they feel good, but they just uh, they just don't seem to be accurate worth a toot. I might uh, I might have to screw the uh, that uh, rifle choke tube in and see if that don't tighten them up some. I might have to go with the rifle choke tube in the 20 gauge. with the rifle choke tube in here. We'll see if that tightened them up a little bit. Wade, does a rifle choke tube help? <laughs> well, what do you guys think? That's I'm holding right there. Six o'clock touching so uh, right there. I'd say uh, that would have more than got it done that time. What do y'all think? Fist. I said fist size of a deer's heart. We'd have had him in the heart with all three of those. I got one more three shot group with 34, blue dot. Let's see how the blue dot does. That blew my socks off, boys. Um, I was half expecting some improvement, but not that drastic of an improvement. So, here on the this next set of uh, three shots we've got the uh, new Fiocchi primed holes 34 grains of blue dot 34 grains of blue dot powder this is pushing this rascal up over 1500 foot per second and we need same thing once again double a 20 wide And we uh, we roll cramp this one. Use a little bit of petroleum jelly. I just keep it here, and it don't take much. Let's see if I can once again I can keep my hand inside of the way of here. beautiful round. All right, let's go shoot these rascals. In the last three shot group, same three inch Fiocchi, brand new hole from Ballistic Products, we got 34 grains of blue dot pushing the Lyman Sabo slug in the AA20 wide and a very pretty roll crimp on the last three shot group using the Lyman Sabo slug at the 20 gauge. Boy, them things are smacking that on me. That's a that is a magnetism load right there. Go, go. There we go. We've got we can use either one of those combos, boys. But that last one with the 34 or blue dot going 1550. And look at that accuracy right there. That's that's two and three quarter inch, two and a half, two and three quarter inch group right there at 50 meters and that's where that big fat shotgun sight on the end you got an optic there ain't no telling what kind of accuracy we'd get if we had a dot or had a had a little full power scope on it but that's just in the vise with a standard shotgun sight vent rim 
Shoot you yeah, boys. I'll say that's a go. Okay, boys. While the um while the 27 grains of blue dot finishes here, I had put together some once fired Remington Nitro 3 inch hulls, Winchester Western Primer, decapped, resized Winchester Western Primer. Now, in this three shot group, you're going to notice something really interesting. I loaded one round, first round that I wanted to try with this, without trimming the pedals on the wide. The round didn't crimp right. I don't have it to show you to demonstrate, but it just didn't crimp right. It didn't fold right. These pedals right here were really cramped on the end of this slug. So for two of the rounds, see here where I trimmed it, trimmed the pedals off right under the, the head of this pellet right here so that they were not between the shell wall and the head of this Sabo slug. I'm going to finish trimming these pedals off to the same length here. Two of them that we're fixing to show you at the range were trimmed. The other one was cramped on the end. Didn't want to crimp right, but I shot it anyway because I just wanted to see what would happen. And I'm going to show you guys what happened. What happened was the slug stuck to the wide. They hung up together. And, uh, and then the other two shot like a dream. But the one that I didn't trim the pedals on to put in this uh, Remington Nitro hull, it, uh, it bound up and stuck. And you'll see that down here at the range. Let's finish getting this thing put together. I just take my little pair of flush cutters here. And once I've got one pedal, I can eyeball it to, uh, to trim the other ones off. Just like that. We're not going to win any beauty contests with it, but we're not trying. See, what we're trying to do, boys, we need those pedals below the head of that Sabo slug. Just like that, so that there's no um, pedals between the top of this thing and the shell wall on that Remington Nitro. I've already got uh, 27 grains of blue dot here. Twenty-seven grains of IMR blue work equally well. And our trimmed Lyman Sabo slug and our trimmed double A twenty wide. Get it pressed down in here. y'all see how tight that thing fits down in there that slug fits in these uh, nitro holes if you've got those um, pedals up there above the head of this Sabo slug it's gonna bind up and it's not gonna crimp right may not even fit into your shotgun real good but you trim that wide and it fits in there just fine now we're just gonna star crimp this absolutely beautiful the, the crimp was trying to push back up on the one that I tried that I did not trim the pedals off of. And the other two came out beautiful, just like this. Let's go to the range and show you what happened. Okay, fellas, I, I forgot I had um, some once-fired Remington Nitro holes in here. I had to trim the AA-12 wide here, but I'll show you that at the bench. And we've got 27 grains of blue dot in here pushing a Lyman Sabo and it's just regular star crimp but we had to trim that AA20 wide to get it to fit in here right but we're gonna give this a shot here at 50 meters Fifteen twenty-two. Now nah, duplicate. Yeah, how about that? We got the exact same velocity on two and three. Fifteen twenty-two. That's the first time I've seen that happen in a while. Okay, boys. So if you don't have the uh, the new ones, 
Oh, Rachel, we got um, we got four holes in this one, honey. Got one dead center ball here. Another one here. Another one here. Another one here. Well, I replaced the bowls now. That's going to be interesting to see what happened there. That's probably wide right there. That's not. That looks like that's probably one of um, one of the wides hit right here. So this is going to be. Here's going to be your three shots right there. One, two, three. That yeah, that big old ripped up mess there. That's going to be where a wide went through. But yeah, that's where the once fired Remington Nitro holes. Mr. Bill still said he's got plenty of those. He's about out of a 12 gauge if he ain't out, but he's uh, he still said he had plenty of the 20 gauge three inch nitro holes. So you boys better get them quick. He's gonna run out. Well, there you go, fellas. And I believe the uh, the 34 grains of blue dot round uh, with that Sabo, with that Lyman Sabo, that's gonna be my go-to round that we're gonna see if we can take a big old fat dough with here in the next week or two. Um, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be showing you how things worked out with the 12 gauge slug. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, uh, an animal with that big old um, Zavrog Zebra Boy segmented slug that we've been putting together. We have got an accurate load put together for that big rascal, and I'm gonna be demonstrating that here in the next video. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. Hope y'all will consider going by Patreon and checking us out and help to help support this channel guaranteed YouTube will demonetize this video I will not see a cent for it and uh, and it's almost impossible to find reloading supplies like that's news to you guys uh, I can't find them either and uh, even with the influence that I have with some producers and all that I can't get them hardly any at all either they can't get supplied so herein is the problem so when you do get your hands on some stuff or you have to modify some stuff Whatever you got to do to make it work, I'm going to help you out just as much as I can. I have several episodes in the queue waiting to uh, get put together and uploaded for you guys. All kinds of good stuff. Alrighty, y'all stand by for all that. We'll see y'all on the next one.